All of us involved with snow and ice management services know firsthand how important it is to prepare in advance of the snow season. One crucial part of preparation is estimating accurately, which Aspire handles seamlessly while allowing for customization of styles of snow contracts. In this demonstration, we are going to walk through the creation of a per occurrence, or sometimes called a per push, estimate. The specific steps we are going to cover start with the capturing of takeoff measurements. We will then show how unique templates are built by each company to ensure they match their contract styles. The third step of the demonstration discusses how to estimate with or without customized production factors. And we finish our discussion with completing and winning some snow opportunities. We start here on our Aspire homepage. We can go look for the property that we're going to create the estimate for by going to our property icon, or we could go up to our search function up here and use P and then the name of the property, and we could quickly find the property that way. So here we're going to go into the property called Plaza Frontenac. Here in the property, before we go in to create the estimate, which we'll do down here in the middle of the page where we create a new opportunity, we're going to first go into this icon up here that looks like a ruler to edit our takeoffs. Now, assuming you did some measurements and you know the property, in your takeoff for information, you're going to want to add that. So here for parking lots, maybe we know that this property is about 40,000 square feet. Um, maybe we know the walkways are about 8,000 square feet. Whatever the details are, you can put those in here with your takeoff. This will save you a step during the estimating process, assuming you're using production factors. And then you simply hit save. Now we're ready to go create the opportunity. So we're going to use the little green plus sign here for the new opportunity. And we can see our different template options. So we go into our folder called Snow, where we have created a few different templates that every company can create their own templates that make sense for them. We're going to the one called Snow Management Contract for now. So inside my opportunity details, you can change the name to whatever makes sense. Maybe this is for the 2019-2020 snow season. The division automatically goes to snow. You can put wherever you anticipate close date when you're writing this proposal up. And then, of course, the start and end of the contract maybe it goes from November through the middle of April. The one thing that's important here is we're using the invoice type here of per service like we just discussed. Maybe there's also different contracts you have that are fixed payment for snow or time and materials. You can set it up however it makes sense for your contract and your customer. Down at the bottom, we have proposal description ones and twos. You put your terms and conditions in here or possibly more details about the contract and the pricing, whatever makes sense for the type of format that you want to send and propose to your customers. Once all that basic information is put in, we simply hover down here to options and we create our estimate. Make sure that all of our costs and our pricing is updated from any changes that have happened in the past few months, and then we keep moving on. Inside this specific template, you can see we have it set up in a couple different groups. We have the driveway snow removal group, we have the sidewalk snow removal group, and then we have some salting. In this example, since it's a per occurrence or per push type environment, we're showing how you can have maybe different ranges, one to three inches, four to seven inches, and so on. Within each one of these services, if you bring down, you can see how they were created. And in this case, since we already put a takeoff information about how many square feet there was for the driveways, it will automatically calculate the pricing based off of the factors that we have in there. So I click into the item, and you can see this specific one was set up as a kit. And the amount of labor it shows as 30,000 square feet per hour to do the service of snow plowing. And since we put in 40,000 square feet as our quantity in our takeoff measurements, it automatically calculates 1.33 hours for the services and marks up the price based off of the markups that you already have set in the system for your company. Maybe you don't do all the plowing or some of the plowing yourselves and use subcontractors. This item would simply just be a sub. You wouldn't use your internal snow estimating. You would go and find your snow subcontractor, maybe have your per push items already set up. And in this case, it was looks like this one was set up for a $100 cost per push for that amount of snow. You can set up as many of these that make sense for the type of subcontractors that you use. And you can also set it up in different terms as well. So maybe it's a subcontractor, maybe it's internal. You can set it up either way based in your template 
or then change your template as you pull this up. Same thing is true for the snow clearing for the sidewalks. As you can remember, we put in about 8,000 square feet for our takeoff information. So there are production factors here, and it looks like there's 1,000 square feet per hour as a production factor. Therefore, this would take you eight man hours to complete this with the markup so the unit costs $20 per hour, and then the markup price gives you your full extended price to your customer. Down in the salting group, you can see you can also do things a little bit differently. In this case, we have simply rock salt material alone as an item, and then our snow service labor as an item. So instead of using kits and production factors, you can just do it subjectively. I want about this many tons or this many hours or whatever the services that you want in there, and you can estimate that way. So estimating has a ton of flexibility. You can create it specifically to what makes sense the way that you estimate in the production factors or no production factors that you use your, for your company. And then the final pricing comes down here that you can see, including your net profit and your gross margin, assuming you had those set up the way that makes sense for your pricing model. If you went through this and you realize after discussions with your customer that there is set pricing that you need to be at, of course you can override and you could say that we know we will only get $600 for the snow clearing this walkway. We know we get $900 for this, uh, four to seven inches, and we know maybe we get $2,000 for the eight to 12 inches, and we know we get um, whatever the, the price might be for over 12 inches, maybe we don't change that because uh, that's not a set price. So you can force the pricing as well for your contract with your SNOW customers. As with all estimates in Aspire, maybe you need to adjust the service pricing for a unique estimate you're putting together. Uh, you can set it up and down based off a percentage. Maybe you set a very specific gross margin that you want this estimate to be. Or of course, maybe you choose an exact fixed price that might make sense. Once you're done making all your adjustments that make sense for this specific estimate, you simply go back and you hover over options and you say that your estimate is complete. At this opportunity, you could also print to see what it would look like going to your customer in draft mode before you complete the estimate. When I come back to my property screen, maybe I forgot that I had an attachment of my measurements that I did. So I can go up here to my attachments. I can add anything into the property, of course. And in this case, maybe I have an example of the map that I did for the measurement. Uh, maybe in this case, I used Go Island for an example, and I want to expose this to the crew so the crew can see this map when they uh, work on this property or work in any of the snow services. And I would simply save that there. So on the property page, you can see the status of this opportunity is approved. We have not yet sent it to the client. We have not proposed it to the client yet and we have not won it yet. So maybe you want to know as you're bidding a lot of different snow contracts, how you're doing across the board with all of them to keep track of it. And you come back to your main page to your opportunities. And in your opportunities, you can create some filters in this snow estimating demo. I simply pulled up all my snow division contracts or, or opportunities, and I want to see what status they are. So that one we just created is approved. Uh, you can see ones that maybe were won or deliver or in the bidding status. You can see maybe their estimated value or their estimated gross margin or gross profit. And you can add other display items here as well. So you can track all your snow estimates very easily to see what status they are in, which ones you need to lock down, and which ones you have not created yet for this season. So again, this was a quick demonstration to show in snow and S estimating how we can use our takeoff data Maybe you will use GoIlon or some other way to get our measurements. How those measurements go into a unique template based off the contract styles that you work. We did a per occurrence or per push style. And then how you actually estimate with custom map factors and then maybe how you estimate without custom factors, whatever is your preference. And then the finishing, completing and winning opportunities and tracking all your snow opportunities for the year is very easy to do within Aspire. We hope this helps.